this is Delmir and welcome to another repair video. In this video we are working on an iPhone 12 mini. And just look at this thing. It is, it is just super messed up. Even the frame, if you look at the corners of the frame, it's, it's just eaten into, it's been really bashed up. So I was originally thinking before I noticed the frame was that I was just going to replace the back glass and that was it. But when it's to this degree of damage, the best option is to do a full back cover, back glass, and frame replacement. Just replace the whole shot. So let's uh, let's switch this view over to the desk view, and uh, we're going to get cracking. To begin with, we need to heat up the phone. Uh, yeah, I, I have to heat it up. The reason why I need to heat it up isn't so much because of the fact that I don't want to hurt the screen. Actually, I wouldn't mind like keeping trying to keep that screen alive because the screen although is very scratched up i'm pretty sure that i could sell this for a little bit of coin on ebay just because the screen is itself not the glass but the screen underneath is in good shape so uh let, let's let's get it heated okay nice and hot should be able to get this off really quickly see it's already popping up there the phone is pretty warm there we have it Everything else on the inside looks fine. It's good and clean. I'm going to shut this up and I want to make sure that this screen still turns on because I will be putting it up for sale on eBay. I don't need the screen. And I've killed the screen. It wasn't like this before. That's, that's unfortunate. Okay, so you can see it's at 86% battery. That's like right on the edge of needing to be replaced. But that is an okay battery health. I'm I'm all right with that. I don't think there's anything else that's outstanding. Unfortunately, it is 17.6.1. I would consider replacing the battery actually if it was uh, iOS 16. Let's get this phone turned off, and uh, we're going to begin transferring everything over to the new phone. Okay, let's get that battery disconnected first before we go any further. We get that away. Take that shield off. Don't really think that. These, like, these screws matter being in any particular order, but I do have them from top to bottom, and it'll do. So let's get these disconnected. There is, as far as I can remember, two cables. Should be this one, and then there should be another. No, it's just the one. I'm thinking the uh, of uh, the iPhone 12, I believe, is like that. This is what's known as a pole. It is supposed to be in very good shape, very good condition, but it is a pull grade C, which means that there could be some scratches or mild scuffs. And since I am selling this on Facebook Marketplace as a used phone, um, I, I feel there's no real issues with that. I mean, that's going to be a far cry better than what it already is in the shape that it's in. You'll notice that I chose blue. I chose a blue case instead of its very light green. The reason why I chose this very light, uh, the, the, the blue over the very light green, I could have got this, is because this is the more popular color. Since the blue is more popular, I want it to sell. If I want it to sell, and I'm going to be replacing the entire thing, why not? Why not just get a get a different color, get a color that I am happy with, and it is amazing. Look at the condition of that phone. They say this is a grade C. Like I can see there's a little bit of a scuff right there that I can just barely notice. They already provide a SIM tray. I didn't need to buy a SIM tray. I have one right here. I've got a 12 mini SIM tray that I purchased. It was like only a dollar or something, but look at that. It comes with a SIM tray. That is so nice. Put that to the side for now. So let's see what is already present. Now, you see this little guy right here? This one right here, I don't see a connection for it on this one. There is no place for it as far as I know. Like if I was to disconnect the camera right here, I don't believe there's anything underneath it. There is not. Well, this camera. Nope, still nothing. I don't know what this is for, but uh, the few times that I have done full 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 frame replacements I've always ended up having to remove this now I got to take out some more screws right there for the camera the camera module so let's do that next and I don't believe there's a lot of cables that need to be cables <laughs> there's not a lot of screws that need to come out for the motherboard 
Just a couple at the bottom that got these screws that are in a screw. I think there's two or three of those. Three? Looks like three. Yes. And before I get started on anything else, I'm going to disconnect all of the ribbon cables first. Now when you're taking out all these screws specifically for the motherboard of the phone, you really need to make sure that these ones are in their proper order. And I'm saying that because I have the odd feeling that these ones may be slightly different in size, but in general it's just good practice to make sure that you are taking them out on the proper order and putting them back in the proper order. More specifically, taking, putting them back in in the proper order, I should say. You gotta go down to the bottom and start taking that Taptic motor out. When I first did one of these, not this particular model, like I've never done a complete strip down and, and gone over for a 12 mini, but I have done it with an iPhone 12 as far as I can remember. And uh, I thought it was a lot more complicated than it actually was. Once you do enough of these, you start seeing a pattern in how Apple designs their phones and you start getting used to how they do it. You just make sure that you've got your screws all in their proper spot and you should be you should be in the safe zone. You should be you should be okay. Just keep in mind, this is a speaker. If you get it too close to your screws, it will pick them up. So like for example, you see these? Yeah. It'll just suck all those up. So I'm gonna put it right here. Same thing with the Daptic motor got a giant magnet in it. So this little piece right here is a bit difficult to get out. It's suctioned in to this little spot here, same idea. And it's got a little bit of a gasket. And you just gotta get that pulled up. So there isn't anything holding it in. There. Now well, there's this, not exactly, but. Oh, there was some adhesive. There's another screw right here I missed. How about that? I'm just gonna put it right here. That works for me. I don't think I'm missing anything else. The whole thing should, in theory, come out right now. Come on. That's stuck to it. That's holding it in. I wonder if there's some other cables that are doing that. Here we go. Got it. Now this needs to come out, which means I need to take the battery out next. So there is a chunk of things that need to be transferred near the bottom. Even the screw. You see there's a little hole right there for a screw? So that needs to come across. Both of those screws need to come out. The easiest way to go and get that out is to remove this battery first. So before I start on this, I gotta before I'm starting this, I gotta get this out. It should be a little easier to get those tabs out now though. These are still gonna be a pain. So get those peeled up. Now if you're wanting to use any of the tools or need any of the tools that I am using to, to work on this phone, you can find my Amazon affiliate links in the video description that can link you right to them, including these pliers that I'm using right now to get this adhesive out. I gotta remove all the, the old adhesive off the battery since I'll be putting some new adhesive down. How easy is this gonna be to take out, I wonder? I believe there is some adhesive across here. I have two ways I could go about this. I could drop a little bit of alcohol in or I could heat it up. Oh, I also gotta take screws out. Okay, yeah, let's let's do that first. And since they're on the side of the frame, I think I'm gonna put these screws way over here as far as possible. And they're also in the correct spot for the area. So this should be a fine, fine spot for it right there. Anything else missing? Any other screws needing? Yes, you see that? hidden screw right right there yeah I can go on this side you also need to take out uh, a couple of screws right on the base of the charge port let's get those out another reason you need to have the battery out by this point okay let's see if I can put this in relatively easily back in I'm saying let's see because this is, um, it looks like a complicated mess as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to start off with the charge port itself. I'm going to screw that back in place first. Now there is four holes, two on each side. you got to make sure you put them in the right, 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 right ones. Because if you put them in the wrong ones, you're going to be putting it actually in the holes where the pentalope screws go. Here's the silver ones that belong here. But yeah, if I put this in right here, you can just see it poking out of the hole right there. 
yeah. This is definitely one of the more fiddly bits, this, this area, simply because you need to put it all back together in a very particular way for it to work, but it'll become very obvious to you if you have put it in the incorrect way. Okay, I don't know how much further that I should be going before I put this back in. Um, I would like to... I'd like to get the motherboard in next. Start over here first. No? Maybe here first? I usually use a plastic spudger while working on the motherboard for getting the cables all out of the way, just in case. I don't know if it's that big of a deal, but it's turned into a bit of a habit. I haven't damaged anything by using tweezers instead. It, it doesn't harm you to, to be a little bit extra cautious. By putting all of these ribbon cables in first, it does cause, uh, it creates a little bit more stability to, to, to work with as you're going. So that is one of the reasons I'm putting these in right now, is just to make life a little easier while I'm working on the phone. Already beginning to look more and more like an iPhone 12 mini, and less and less like some weird empty shell of a fake phone. <laughs> and it does have a look of a fake phone when it's this empty. I just noticed that there's a washer right here and I just put all the cables in. It goes right here. Um, okay, I still have some space, so I should be able to put this in. I've never noticed there to be a plastic or rubber washer here before. This is, this is news to me. That's, uh, that's quite bizarre. I think I'm ready to put in the, the, the Taptic engine next. I'm probably going to find out that I need to take out that, that Y-Wing screw now. I think that's actually exactly the case. The Y-Wing screw needs to go in next. And that's probably why they made it a Y-Wing screw, is just to make it a little bit more, for the people that put it them together, makes it a little bit more easy to understand where things go. And that's just a guess, but I think it's a pretty good guess. If you ever don't know what you're doing, where you're going, I should say, with a phone that you're rebuilding, the easiest way to do it is if you're recording yourself, just watch yourself taking it apart again. That's a pretty easy way to figure it out. So the rest of these little bits and bobs there, right here at the side, they're for the, uh, the speaker module for the bottom. That is what needs to go in next. I believe I need to put this in first. Let's just put it in first and see where where things are, are going. So you see here, you got this giant gap right underneath there. So it's guaranteed that this needs to be in here, this screw and a screw. We're getting pretty close to done. Four screws remaining. Look at that, they're all gone. All the screws there that were taken out of here, put there, are now in here. It's great, feels good. I think we're working next on the camera. You gotta put that one in first, that cable, and then the next one goes in afterwards. I got this little guy, this little pad thing. Where do you go? I cannot remember. You gotta make these relatively tight. You be careful with it. Obviously, if you if you skip off the screw, you're gonna damage the motherboard. But if you do not make these tight enough, you will find a very difficult when you're trying to take the screw out another occasion, or if it's another technician that is working on it, trying to take the shields off. The screw and a screw will come with the screw that you put into it if these are not tight enough. So you got to slot this in on the left side first. There is a little bit of a place to put that. And once it is inside that little place that it needs to be, it should slide in. And if it doesn't, then you might need to take the camera front, uh, the, the, the back camera out first and then try again. And I think that's the case. I think I need to take the, the back camera out first. Let's try that again. And I know where this goes now. I am pretty sure, at least. I think this goes right across here to there. So I might need to take that out first. We'll, we'll see. Let's get these cables all plugged in first. Okay, let's see what that looks like now. Does it go over top or does it go underneath? I think that this needs needs to go over top of that screw in a screw. There is nothing else that's gonna go over top of it. So if there was something else that was gonna go over top of this, this particular screw right here, then this plate would go underneath and then the, the second plate after that would go over top. That's how it would be done. 
might have made a mistake, but I was right. There is another shield that's going across it. So this goes underneath. Put that other shield in. That does go in first. I can put that camera, the back camera back in. That's good, that is in. This SIM tray that came with the phone, it's not sitting, it's not sitting right inside of the phone. I believe it's an issue with the gasket. I think the gasket's too loose. That gasket is definitely loose. So uh, the phone may have came with a, uh, with a SIM tray, but that SIM tray is not, not cutting it for me. So it's a good thing that there was one that, that I, I purchased with it. Just, that'd be frustrating if I had to put in an order for just another SIM tray and I'd have to put this phone off for another day. Let's put the battery in. We're gonna give this a test. I need to test the screen. I also need to transfer over the face, the uh, face, no, no, the uh, True Tone needs to be transferred over. I believe it goes in this direction. Okay, let's read that data. So we're gonna write. All right, let's test it. But it is doing what it's supposed to and the battery percentage should still be in place. 86%, good. Okay, I'm gonna let it charge up for a bit. And um, then I'm gonna have to go over to my microscope and we're gonna have to go and transfer over this chip right here. And we're gonna have to transfer it over to the iPhone 12 mini. Here you've got, this is where you see the Apple logo chip that would usually go right here but they want you instead to go and put the chip right here. And they've already got it pre-balled for me, which is is quite nice. So what, what does this come up? I have a feeling it, it does. It folds out and away from the phone so that if you look at it, it pulls out like that and then I can solder it on here as it is there. It doesn't show where the pin one is, which is a little frustrating, but I can take a guess that based off of the pin one location of this, that pin one is likely here. Now, I don't know if I can get, if there's any fill around this. It looks like there is. There's definitely fill around it. And as I heat it up, I should be able to get that, that, that fill off. I got it set to 380 degrees Celsius at 30, or I'd say a three out of 10 airspeed. Three out of eight airspeed, apparently. There we go. I've, I've done it. Now I'm just gonna clean this chip up. I'm gonna remove all of the material from around the edges. And I need to remove the fill that's around the pads as well. And now I've got a device that is dedicated to cleaning up stuff like this. I think I might have showed this little guy on my channel before, but it's, it's, it's this right here. You just put the chip in the center. But yeah, that's what that little guy's for. I, and I'm going to put that in there and uh, heat up that chip and uh, give this a good scrape. Just a tiny amount of, of flux to get this going. And wipe off the majority. i got to get those pins clean. So let's heat it up and uh, clean off that, that, that material around the side first. Now, I don't know much cleaning I can actually do without removing those balls first. I got my soldering iron turned on. Have it set to 390. Let's mix in some leaded with this. Lots of leaded. Looks like some of it has already come away, probably while I was removing the chip. You can just use the wick to draw the soldering iron around. give that a quick clean and let's just see how that looks I think I missed a few pads yeah it's hard to get them all off it's hard to get it all clean when you've got like that fill in so I think I'm going to try to remove some of the fill at this point and then I'll give it another go I've got to heat up the fill and I've got um, still my heat heat gun on at 380 and you're going to start trying to peel away. I'm scraping very lightly. Only I think one or two pads that I missed. 
That's really encouraging. You've got to be careful how hard you push because you could start scraping the masking away. And if you do that, then it can quickly become game over. So just taking it slow. I'm a bit concerned because I got the screen right here. I'm going to put a piece of paper over top of the screen and hopefully that might give it a bit of protection. Put a little tiny drop of flux on here. Might even get rid of some of that. That looks like it might be a slight bit too much flux. Top left corner. Top, top left corner. Okay, it's about as good as I can do. Just get this heat on now. It's up to temperature. Now I gotta give it a poke test. So all you can do at this point is disconnect the battery, disconnect the screen, get the seal in, in place. So here's the old screen. We're gonna have to transfer this over, and I think that's about it. Okay, this one, this chip right here, this sensor can be sometimes a little bit difficult to get out. I like to lever against something in order to get it, get it going. I've never broken one before, I just, I don't want to have a first. I'm going to try heating it up. It might make it a little easier. I don't need it incredibly hot, just hot enough. Hot to the touch. My hands are cold, so it's a little, a little harder than normal to determine exactly what hot to the touch is. There, that was easy. I'm going to do that in the future. I've never done that before. Heating it up to, to get that part out. There. Let's transfer it over. Got to take out, take out, take off the protective adhesive strip things. This bit should just snap in both of these. Not exactly snap in, but yeah, it feels like it snaps in. Okay, very good. Get the screws back in and we'll be in business. Okay, let's just get this adhesive in. We're getting really close to finished. I'd like to start with the cameras first. Go from the, the top, the very top, and then work my way to the bottom. And I'm misaligned. Let's try that again. Nothing's pressed in yet, so I should be okay. I think that's better. Okay, before I go and put everything back in place and seal the phone up, I do need to do a final test. That went in nice. Put the earpiece back in. At this point, I'm pretty sure everything's fine, so I should be able to plop the battery in without any issue. So, connect the battery first. Let's turn it on. I'm also just kind of hoping that I'm turning the phone on, and when it turns on, then the message is going to be gone. It's not, but I'm hoping. So, the unknown display part message is still present. The Face ID message should disappear. It shouldn't be there. There, yeah, it's gone. I've definitely messed up the screen, though. Okay, everything looks fine. Everything's doing what I would expect, except the display showing that message. I think we're about ready to go and put the shields in place. Let's put that screen in place. I always start from the top and make sure that I've got some pressure. It's a little bit easier with the iPhone 12 series because of just how inlaid the screens are compared to other phones. Now I'm going to leave the, the, the protector on there for now, but that is it for you guys. It's, it's done. I mean, we're, we're, we're going from this ugly thing and we went to this and that frame was super banged up. It's, it's in, it's in really rough shape. I am so happy with the end result of what this looks like. So if you guys like the video, please do leave a like. And if you want to see more of my stuff, subscribe. We'll see you guys all in another video. Bye.